so bad. All right, so I'm back on. In this video, actually, to be honest, I forgot what I came up here for. I'll remember it in a second. Give me a second. I'm trying to multitask in life is so difficult. Okay, so I got it. Today's video is about the science of how they use words <clears throat> to connect us to either the past or the present. I did the breakdown of a word called uh, eat and ate. And ironically, they have the same letters, <clears throat> just rearranged in a different um, order. And we know that uh, eight would imply uh, past tense, and eat <clears throat> would imply present. Well, this also goes to uh, saw, seen. I mean, we have many different words, you know. And now ask the question, why is saw, past tense, attached to, um, in essence, a buzz? know buzz saw but uh, a saw uh, makes a sound you know um, but anyway I'm going to give you a <clears throat> you made me spill my uh, fruit loop cereal staring at you very obvious don't go low let's stay high we, we got a we got a video to do All right so listen so <clears throat> these names also have hidden titles or phrases embedded within them one individual that you idolize in our history books is Ben Franklin. <laughs> and this individual, Ben Franklin, has been um, known as like the father of electricity. So in essence, you can connect Ben Franklin to Zeus. But let's not run on a tangent, but if you look at even his um, image, the beard and the image itself, it's highly likable to your Greece version or Greek version, I'm sorry, of Zeus. But mm, let's just go a little bit deeper. His name is Ben. Do you understand what that's implying? That's implying past tense. That's implying, in essence, I've been here before. If you're saying that you are a Ben, and this is what made me think of this in the life. You know, I have an uncle named Benjamin, Ben Ja, men, like minute. <laughs> ben, the Ja, and the men, you know? Because I was going to call Benjamin Father Time, which would be Kronos, which also has a connection to Zeus, and once again, you know, time, Saturn, things like that. But let's just stay with me, because I want to tell you, I, I give you things based on life. So you can go see these things yourself and don't take it at face value. So, I've had an energy in me for a very long time. And I haven't really publicly told people. Now, my children know of it. And it's just because every time my kids will come up to me, <clears throat> this is when we live together every day. I don't live with my kids now. That's why I say it like this. So every time when we live together, my kids would come up to me. They'd be like, who are you? Who are you? And I'll say, I'm Franklin. I'm Franklin. I'll say this. And I don't even know why I would say that at times. But in essence, I do. Because in my head, the way that I perceive Franklin is a Caucasian skinny teenager um, that was like abandoned, pushed away. You know, and it's interesting because then I start doing a little research on this character, Franklin. And he's embedded in your fan, uh, Fantastic Four Chronicle. He is the child of um, Stretch and the Invisible Lady. And he is a uh, Omega Mutant. But just stay with me. Franklin, in my personal opinion, is the devil. Okay? Yes, Franklin the Turtle. Yeah, you get it. And I believe that Franklin is the devil. Now, I have had this theory for about two years now that this universe is created off of an architect like the Matrix shows you and that architect has a name his name is Franklin 
and he is like your Santa Claus or you know and just like in Egyptian culture they teach you Horus was two beings Horus the old and Horus the young this is the same construct there's two variations of this energy the young energy that's not tainted and then the old energy um, that is you know polluted by emotion and experience so when you're saying you've been Franklin this is you know in essence what this is but listen listen I'm trying to give you confirmation in the life how life supports your theories so I couldn't sleep last oh I did sleep I woke up at like five o'clock in the morning last night couldn't go back to sleep so I watched a movie called Hotel Artemis now, I didn't even go into the name Artemis which I can but I'm not you can find this movie yourself it's available for rent Hotel Artemis had a overlord who controlled LA and his name was Franklin and he in this movie referred to himself as the devil they even referred to him as the devil and if you steal from the devil this is the term they used you get placed in the ocean you know so this is your Poseidon construct and how the, 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 the trident was charged with electricity this is those connections but I just want you to understand that there is a movie that said that Franklin is the devil in my face and I'm watching this and I'm like wow that's crazy because like the devil is like in my personal opinion in connection to developing like to develop something like that is the dev devil develop so who was a developer, like a programmer? Who was a developer in our current space-time? Fucking Benjamin Franklin. What do you mean? <laughs> that is that is it. That is it. That is the primary inventor, because we won't give Tesla or Allset backwards his credit. So because we won't give Tesla his credit, it's Ben Franklin. And like I said, that is showing you who or what he is. He has Ben Franklin. Now, Frank, let's talk about this word. We know that Frank would be truth. Be frank with me. So be truthful with me. And it's interesting to say that the devil is often depicted as a liar or a trickster when in your biblical account, the God of Eden would be the liar. He said, eat of this, you will die. That is a lie. You will not die. But in essence, you would transform. So, the true lie in your biblical account by what you have been taught and honored and praised at many times in your life, even if you're saying you don't do it now, you did. So you did put those contracts in. You did put those agreements in. So that, that doesn't disappear. You know, so... You need to understand this context of this text. You need to understand what you've agreed to. You know, so because this deity, in essence, did not tell you the truth, and there was another deity you call Lucifer, or, or a bearer of light, which was showing you the truth of this light. That's why he was one to bear. Then you also have to think about the concept of a bear. You know, the enlarged energy. You know, that often hibernates when it gets cold. Um, I'm not going to go through some of these. So, Frank is also connected to something you call a hot dog. All right? So, this is this is help you guys really understand this science of these words you use. Well, if it's a hot dog, and if you ever wonder why we, out of all words, this is the only one we put a temperature to, we don't go around and say hot burger. We don't go around and say um, hot chicken, but we say hot dog. Why? Well, <laughs> first off, T-O-H is in connection to Thoth, just so you know. So when you put hot backwards, you get the word Thoth. But let's just stay with hot. Hot would be symbolic for the sun. Hot would be symbolic for the, the, resur uh, the resurrection or the rising sun. All right. So if we're talking about hot, we're in essence talking about the most high because that has to do with temperature. If something's at the most high, it's at the highest peak, in essence, at the highest temperature. 
So the most high hmm, would be in connection to Frank or hot. It would have to. And then now you keep going. You have the word dog and we know easily the word dog backwards is God. So what would be the hot God? A lot of hot gods out here in this world. Do you even understand what a star is when they when they when they speak on stars in biblical texts? You often think that they're talking about stars that shine in the sky, but you're not looking at the practical use of these terms. What about the stars that shine on earth? Jesus was a star. Nimrod was a star. King Henry was a star. Many stars on this planet. You have to understand what would make you a star. Well, in essence, Lucifer would be a star. He would be a, a objective light source. And I say objective for a reason because in, in essence it's, it's opposition to your own inner light. But we often go out to go in. So I'm trying to really help you guys understand, like, stars are things that go against the grain. Stars are things that are abnormal. If they did things that were like everyone else, they wouldn't be stars. They wouldn't be praised, they wouldn't be idolized. And this is now getting me to the deeper concept of this video, which would be your superheroes. Even the movie Logan shows you a lot of this science but you guys don't pay attention to these movies I understand the movie Logan was placed in the year 2029 where a lot of mutants were killed by Charles by Professor X by the X so a lot of mutants did not survive the shift but I'm not going to get into Logan so these superheroes, these mutants, do you know why they are idolized? Because they go against the grain. They are not normal. Do you know who this would represent? I can give you a person that would be considered a superhero by your standards now. Now, is he really a superhero now? No, you know, but was, or could have been. There is a, um, a, a personality known as Boonk. He used a term called Boonk Gang. And I say this for a reason. He developed a level of stardom based on him taking on... Alright, let me help you guys understand something. These are simulations, people. And I don't think you quite understand these simulations. So let me help you understand a simulation. Christ consciousness is a simulation. So there are certain individuals on this planet that are living out that simulation and are wholeheartedly embedded in the program of Christ consciousness. But we have other consciousness. We have other programs. I'll give you a simple program. Robin Hood. Rob from the rich. Give to the poor. That is a program. That was the program that your social media personality, Boom, was following. He would rob corporations and give back to himself. And then, in essence, not only did he rob from these corporations and give back to himself, once he developed a level of stardom, he gave back to fans. And this created a level of stardom for him. A dome, a star. A star dome. To place a star within a dome. A firmament. Is that the word that they use in the Bible? I think so. You know. I'm not a scholar, people. You know. Just trying to tell y'all things that just is evident. You don't have to be. I can, sixth graders can understand that shit. You know. But listen. So. Because he was doing something that connected to a program you all can resonate with. You, in essence, 
do small things in life that rob from the rich and give back to the poor. Please don't say you don't. All you motherfuckers are slick as fuck. All you guys get over on your job, your fucking anything. That's Y'all do this. Don't act like you don't. And it's okay. This is normal. This is life. This is how you balance things. Yes, firmament. Yes, thank you, Matt. You got it. So, he um, is also about activation. Because this is what stars do. Stars shine light. And this light has information. So once this star is then being recognized, I'm a star. You recognize my light. So once you recognize this star's light, you then can allow this star to guide you. Northern light. Star of Bethlehem. You know, you get this concept of allowing, because Bethlehem is an ideology. Bethlehem is a place that represented an idea. So if that is the star of Bethlehem, then that is like the spokesperson or president of motherfucking Bethlehem. Stars of Jerusalem. This is what they're trying to help you understand. So Book Gang is the star of motherfucking Robin Hood. That is what he is. Rob from the rich and give to the poor. And then what does he do? He activates things, templates within you that progress ideas forward. What do you mean? Motherfucking I offer. Motherfucking eBay. I won't say eBay, but I offer. Like, basically, look, pawn shops. Pawn shops started fucking us over. Facts. What the? What the fuck you mean you giving me fucking four dollars? I paid 35 bucks for this. You gonna give me four bucks? Six bucks? That's not equal. That's not fair. That doesn't work. So... You know, uh, we just started robbing the motherfuckers. So that was the whole concept of a lot of those pawn shops. And this, the the reality of it is they couldn't protect their investments. They have expensive shit and they're, they think about, think about a pawn shop. Think about this. They have almost in some pawn shops, the same stuff as your, your jewelry store, you know, your sacks, your, your, they have expensive products. They don't have the, the, the same security they do. So this is just my point, you know, they're trying to keep up with those corporations and be those corporations and be greedy like those corporations, but not doing the same magic as those corporations. So they're not protected like those corporations. And then in essence, motherfuckers rob you, you know, so that became an unsafe system. So then we started converting those pawn uh, individuals started going digital and then I offer comes together, Um, you know, different apps that let you sell things. So this is just, these are ideas that have to be sparked by motives. These are, you know, so this is, Boom Gang's a representation of that. Now, I can keep going, you know, but I just want you to understand that certain things are triggers or motivating factors, okay? Certain things are sparks. You have to understand how these sparks work. See, you say uh, Trump is gassed up. You know, or fueled up. All right, about to, about to pop, you know? You say he's gassed up. And once again, we understand that um, gas is uh, uh, a um, precursor to plasma. And we understand that plasma uh, has become a um, source light. And I'll use that word. You know, um, I won't say light source because this is not you're not grasping what I'm saying, you know, so because plasma has become a source light and. um, We now have to understand that this plasma isn't always seen because we don't get to see the light spectrums with the eyes. So this is what I'm trying to help you understand this gas or these gassed up individuals, these fueled up individuals are charging plasma. That is what I'm trying to help you guys understand. Which means it's charging light realms within you. You, you are in a state of darkness to oneself. And you have to understand the only way that you can develop light in one's darkness is by charging oneself up. 
it is important to understand one's charge, one's spark. And let there be light is the best way for you to understand a spark. There has to be a motivation to even fuel you to say these things. But you also have to then understand that you are in darkness. Do you understand that? Do you understand that when the Bible says God in the beginning said, let there be light. It is signifying its own understanding of one's darkness. That it is truly in darkness. And that it is then willing to spark its own light. Don't allow these other fueled up individuals to spark you. You have your own gas. You have to understand that a lot of the gas that we are intaking right now is coming from the animals that we consume. But we are transitioning out of the realm of animals based on it affecting our emotions. And we are now getting back into our vega or vegan roots. Once we then connect back with, and this is about consciousness and people, you know, you guys did not want to acknowledge that house pet in the 50s as nothing more than a motherfucking house pet. That was it. That was all you viewed it as. And over time, we was able to see the complexities of these animals and the consciousness of these animals. And now that we are willing to accept these animals, not quite as equals, but almost. We have a lot of different activist groups that protect these things. We have a lot of different things out here to make sure that the animals understand we care. You know, so there's a level of connected connectiveness with them now, with us. So we don't have to consume them or eat them anymore. See, you have to understand even cannibalism is about connectivity. We lost ourselves. We didn't know who or what ourselves were at a time, so we ate ourselves to remember. It's really not that hard or complicated to understand the practicalness of these things. You can't know a thing if you don't know a thing. They've connected with humans now, I'll say specifically, it was the beings that resided within the Kakaku Mountains that were the cannibals. But once again, they were enslaved within caves and forced on, on mountains and did not have the ability to move forward in um, life. Very close to your Anunnaki's that do not get to propel forward in life because they choose not to let their bodies go or consciousness go. I'll say that. They let their bodies go, but not their consciousness. So they're enslaved too. They're no different. So it's very important to understand that you don't quite understand how your uh, Vega roots are or, or even the technology behind plants yet. You know, but we will. And the more we consume them and the more we eat them, the more you will connect with that. And then this would help you connect with um, your Zeta reticular pass. Um, man, I'm really tapping into a lot of stuff and I don't really, I hate, I hate these long videos, but you guys got to understand the connection of this. So the future of humanity is being projected as a cyborg, cy, cy, cyborgs, cyborgic. I don't even know if that is a word, you know, but a machine. And it's easier to uh, control and manipulate machine. We know that through the Iron Age, um, uh, and that has to do with the manipulation of metals. So we're fully, av fully aware that they've mastered the manipulation of metals. Um, it's also called alchemy. Um, you know, so they have the, the ability to um, control metal more than organic. And the way that they control the human construct in the future would be through the metal, you know, or the cy cy cyborgic or so there's, there's different limbs and shit that we start putting in our body and uh, the different nanite technology that's going to be turned on when they want to turn it on, um, different things like that. So stay with me. This happened before. This isn't the first time that this happened. We have actually transferred our consciousness inside of something prior. Now, you can call it a plant, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. 
But this is what Little Shop of Horrors is about. This is what the Venus Flytrap is about. This is what weed is about. There is actually consciousness inside of plants. There are actually souls inside of some plants. And that these souls... Okay. <laughs> An animal has a wider range of expression. So because that animal has a wider range of expression, it can communicate itself through its movement or expressions. Show its teeth, spike its hair up, different things like this. But the prior creation before animals were plants. And the secret about this is they were a way of controlling one's emotion. This is where your Vulcans chose to transfer their consciousness. Good old smart Spock. <laughs> so your Vulcans chose to transfer, and this would be your Luciferians too, disconnected, their, their consciousness into plants. Just so they can, they can control their emotions. They didn't want their emotions to be um, manipulated or um, orchestrated in negative ways. So if you can't show a person how you feel, which is through the plant genome or construct, then they can't, in essence, hurt you or uh, attack you. And this is pretty deep. So it's important for you to learn your uh, plant roots and how we have transferred our consciousness inside of plants as well. And that why we feel so good when we do herbs and because motherfucker, that's your soul. You just don't get it. Um, so uh, the um, greys... The beings you know as greys are actually grown very similar to eggplants. And they are created not to have long, big mouths, noses, um, and just different facial features so that they can't be, um, so that they can't articulate themselves. They can't express themselves. They can't express their emotions. And this is important to control. It's all about controlling one's emotion. And uh, you're willing to give give up, you know, your I guess body in essence to not be controlled. So it's not, don't think of, don't beat yourself up. You know, we beat ourselves up on certain things. Don't go so low to yourself. But understand um, the greys are us and they are a uh, vegan or um, uh, uh, grown prop or crop. <laughs> wow, now I get the word prop. Uh, they're a grown crop. Um, and this grown crop. Um, is basically created very similar to the way that our, our, um, our robotoids, uh, our, our synthetic robotoids are created now. You know, they are, well, our, our, our synthetic robotoids now are created through 3D printers, you know, but prior to that, it was done through hydroponics. So that's why, my bad, you know, um, but, but these things were grown in, shark tanks in essence you know um and uh it gets deep so there there i've had future regressions oh i've had regressions and i've regressed people into the future where they've seen these robotic beings and that they've have had they had souls within them she can feel it but she said they couldn't express themselves so imagine your soul not being able to express itself and that's, you know, the whole purpose of 5G. You know, you have to understand the fifth dimension is connected to your solar plex. You think your solar plex is connected to the number three. And it is when it goes internally. But you have to understand your chakra system is connected to two uh, external systems that affect everything. Or that even two external systems that were internal at a time. Your mother, your father. The, the day, the night. The moon, the sun. You know, so that's how you get to your nine. So... Moon one, sun two, or vice versa. Root chakra would be three. Sacral chakra would be four. Solar plex would be five. This is the whole purpose of 5G because it's going to literally affect your soul or your solar purpose here on this planet. Why the fuck you're here? It's going to control your identity, a.k.a. your job is going to be connected to the 5G network. It's going to control your income, a.k.a. your movement on this planet. Because your movement on this planet is based on your coin, motherfucker. If you don't have the right coin, you're not moving around this motherfucker. Very simple. So your currency or coin is connected to your movement. All solar plex shit. 
all solar plex. So it's all in essence of controlling and governing one solar plex. And the interesting, interesting thing about the solar plex is you can't really place uh, like ro robotic um, systems there. Because it's kind of hollow. And then you place these organs within that space. You know, and these organs, you know, are just um, reacting to uh, the movement of one's heart or one's mind. You know, so you understand that your stomach is just really moving based on one's heart or one's mind. Your mind tells your stomach it's hungry. Your stomach reacts by growling. And then your body reacts through solar plex by moving and going to get some food or whatever the fuck y'all do to get food. You know, so this is, in essence, you know, how it works. But this is basically like the next version of something that they've done prior. They've controlled our original emotions um, or um, this is basically uh, a lot of the souls that resonate on Maldek are now inside of Grays. So they put a lot of souls inside of Grays. The other souls came to Earth. And that is in your plants, people. You know. So right now, uh, we're getting a lot of our uh, vegan or vegan roots. And I know a lot of people are uh, worried because they're saying, I don't just... Basically, this is, this is a norm. And I want you guys to understand this. People are saying they're not giving a fuck. You know, like, in essence, like... The things that they've held so much weight towards, or even opinions of others, or just ways that they perceive things, they've, they've, they're transitioning out of that school of thought. And that's going to come with it. You know, you're essentially not going to resonate with things. These fucking people are annoying. You're basically not going to resonate with things um, that, not, that do not fit your soul purpose or your soul mission. And it's important to understand that your soul mission or your soul purpose connects to a solar deity or a macro body outside of you. Everyone here has a specific position. Everyone here has a specific job. I have been honored and gifted to learn mine. I am vision. I want you to understand how this works. And I'm going to get off this live. Actually, I might go do some of these. Maybe. Yeah, I have some time. I explain life like this. The lady I did the regression to, who we call Key, understands that she is two deities. And I need you to understand the science of two is four. She understands that she is two deities. And I want you to understand this science with anything that is light. Say you have two energies that are coming to you. Even if they're coming to you as what you would define as a demon. That demon is still casting some form of light on you. So you can perceive it. So even a demon, this is important, can cast a shadow. They tell you that you have, oh my God, yo, my phone be fucking going crazy. That you have two deities on the left side of you and the right side of you. A good energy, a good angel, and a bad angel. Well, understand they both cast shadows. So instead of you looking at them as just singular deities, they're actually four, which is how you create your frame or your, your square. So understand, the key has to have four sides. Important. All right? So if you claim to be key, vibration, pitch, you need to learn about north, south, east, west. You need to learn about morning, afternoon, noon, night. You need to learn about... Uh, fire, earth, air, water. You need to learn about the four parts of your brain. You need to learn about the four bodies connected to the physical body. You need to learn what it is to be key. Steps, levels to this shit. I didn't say I was key. I said I was vision. So what does this mean?
You know what? Before I move forward, I want to ask y'all a question. Do y'all know what the Statue of Liberty is made up of? Better yet, is the Statue of Liberty made of stone or made of metal? Let's see if we can answer this question. It's made of copper, metal. Is that, that's what we're saying, copper? Okay, so metal. Metal. All right, cool. I just wanted to make sure we're in consensus. Okay. And the frame that's holding up the Statue of Liberty, is that metal or stone? We're talking about the base. Stone. All right. Thank you. We're on the same page. I want you guys to learn something here. The vision, the ideas, okay? The vision, the ideas, the principles, the ideologies are in the metal. Do you understand what I'm saying? Once again, the principles, the ideas, the vision is in the metals. They mold the metals to match the vision. That has been deemed predominantly a patriarchal system. Predominantly. Most of the statues around the world are of men. And most of the statues around the world are made of metal. Now, ancient statues were made of stone. And a lot of these ancient statues have been um, defaced or damaged. So it's hard to even know their original state anyway. But this matters. I want you to understand this principle. Ideas, vision, principles are always in the metal. But they're always being held up by the foundation, by the key. Statue of Liberty is the vision. And everyone sees the vision. Everyone praises the vision. But never acknowledges its foundation. And its foundation is stone. Its foundation is feminine. In ancient cultures, when they created statues out of stone, they've incorporated the divine feminine. So you understand that stone, Medusa, stone is connection to the divine feminine and it's everlasting. Stone, mountains, volcanoes, Isis went to the mountains when she fled Mar Marduk and Enki. Mountain, stone, women, connection to stone, stone, heart, heart, stone, stone, masons, my sons, stone. So listen, stone is in connection to foundation, is in connection to direction. You ever wonder which direction the Statue of Liberty sits at? Did you ever think about that? It is sitting in a direction. It is standing on a square. So direction, polarity, this shit counts. And then moreover, do y'all even get it? <laughs> yeah, I don't. What is that foundation based on? Which ultimately fuels the vision. But what is that foundation based on? Now, we know the Statue of Liberty is on an island. So, that's showing allegiance to um, 
in essence, the Amazonians, you know, or a race of females that lived on an island that was away from society, but it also represents solidarity. Correct. Once again, stone. And it's surrounded by water. Living water, which is another principle. So I want you really to start just digging deep. It's, it's not based on Gaia or Gaia or Terra or Tiamat, all these different words we use. It's on a different system. Now, a lot of our statues are found, uh, are based <clears throat> in um, Gaia. And I'm about to go because I don't have time to answer these questions. And this is about to really help you guys understand why XXX had a song called Sad. What is sad backwards? S A D Backwards is what? D A S, right? Das Yes, Das Okay It's going to be some homework for you guys Try to find all the information you can About Das Google Das Demon Google Das Occult. Matt, don't cheat. I'm trying to give him some homework to do. <laughs> Look it up. But understand, D is the fourth letter. I know Das is German. Just, you want to say it? You know. But, yes. Look up what Das is. And... No, you're good. You're good. You're good. You know, I'm not mad at it. You know, but do some research. You know, see what you find, and uh, we can come back to this. But I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Till next time.